we are here at the Tsaikopi uh, Chilco Lake, um, and this water here is uh, our healing, cleansing waters of the Tsaikopi, and this is what we're protecting. This is why our war leaders have fought and died for our people to protect these waters, the waters of Daziko, Tesiko, as well as all of our waters, our lands, uh, wild salmon, our wild plants and our way of life. And that is why our elders have testified and proven to Canada, to all people, that um, we were here. And we should not have had to prove, but our elders stood up and honored our ancestors, our land, and our future generations. This journey is uh, so important because it's uh, been 20 years uh, in this country of Canada. The Constitution talks about Aboriginal rights and title, and yet uh, First Nations Aboriginals across Canada are still struggling. We're still um, fighting for our Aboriginal rights and title. When we look at this uh, this case and where it's headed, you know the issue of Aboriginal title is starting to break down some of those legal fictions that have that have stood uh, withstood the test of time far too long, we believe, and we're very honoured because we do know that uh, this case uh, is a, a potential precedent for the entire nation. I pray in a good way that it it comes out in a good way because you know I think all our ancestors are with us on this you know and. And they're with us, supporting us, and everybody er, along the way. Everybody is supporting us. All the people that have been hosting us, and you know, it's just an honor to be here. And yes, we need the land. We need the land for our future and then give all our people hope. I mean, we're going to Ottawa Supreme Court of Canada to get title. And I know with the previous one before this, they are introducing the postage stamping, but all I got to say is no thanks. We already got that. We got reserves here and there all over our area and it doesn't work for us. Too much destruction is happening to our land, and we don't like what we see. So that's what we are doing here, you know, that um, fighting for our very existence and rights. And you know, it's not just just for us; it's for all the native native people right across, right from Canada, right across the world. I think you know. This is the most important case that is before the country. And so as such, this is one of the most important moments in the assertion of who we are, of standing firm in our title and rights. And you do us all very proud by making the stands that you have and that you continue to do to bring us here to Ottawa as we uh, complete this portion of the journey going to the Supreme Court of Canada. We as people testified 
in this trial about our land, about our ways, and how we honor our lands, our resources, our people. There's only one decision we will accept, and it's long overdue in this country, and that's full acknowledgement of our Aboriginal right title. Long overdue. Sokotin people, for the elders, for all indigenous peoples of Turtle Island, and certainly for the citizens of this country to complete the business of confederation, for the Supreme Court to take this opportunity to bring forward an honourable decision that fully acknowledges and embraces the title, the indigenous land rights of the Sokotin people in order for that to lay the foundation for true and genuine reconciliation to begin to take place. This litigation was provoked by forestry activity, provincial forestry activity, so it was a defensive action. That finding was made by the trial judge and the Court of Appeal. So the, if you like, the claim area was defined from the outset in response to threatened, devastating forestry of what the Chilcotin perceived to be their Aboriginal title lands. It's all backwards. They need to start listening to our laws and um, the Chinsadi Khan, like that's, that's our law. How did the province gain control of the homelands of Indigenous peoples in British Columbia in the absence of treaty? To shift the colonial paradigm to complete the unfinished business of confederation, this court, we ask, acknowledge the centrality of land to the Chilcotin and declare Aboriginal title. It's an incredibly important case, uh, not only in Canada, but from around the world. And I would say actually more broadly for the cause of human rights, because the situation of Indigenous peoples, the denial of their land rights, the, the suffering and the harm that that causes, is one of the most crucial human rights issues of our time. And what the Sokotin are doing here today are advancing a, a standard that, that everybody should, should stand behind. HGG submits that the only practical compromise is to construct a new paradigm based on the promotion and protection of human rights by integrating the framework of international law into the domestic Aboriginal rights law to provide a way forward to achieving reconciliation through more effective processes. It's very uh, exciting and heartening to see the Silco team people finally get their day in court, for the elders to be there and for their voices to be heard. Uh, we're very hopeful the Supreme Court of Canada will uh, take into account all of the evidence that those elders gave, all of those years of trial, and uh, affirm what the trial judge did uh, several years ago and finally declare Aboriginal title uh, to this core of Honeyguatin and Silcoteen land, setting a precedent for Canada and hopefully setting a new way forward for First Nations and Crown relations and for all Canadians into the future. Regardless of what they say here, we're already winners because the more issues that come down the pipe, if we don't get the answer we want here, there's going to be a lot more disruption. No matter what, we will always will own this land that we don't own it for ourselves, but it's given to us by the, our creator 
only for us to borrow to pass on to the next generation.